Good morning, Year 6. It's Thursday, the 25th of February, 2021. And today in our reading lesson, we are learning to apply learnt skills. It's a skill lesson. OK, this is because we have already learned how to answer the different types of questions. And today we are putting it into practice. We are doing it, applying what we know. OK, today we're going to look at a text called Dirty and Dangerous, Nasty Jobs from the Past. From this title, do you think it's fiction or non-fiction? That's right, it could be both, but it's likely that it would be non-fiction because it's talking about jobs from the past. However, um, it could be fictionalised within that. It could be story-like. Okay, what do you expect it to look like? So if it's non-fiction, you would expect it to include um, a title and some subheadings and maybe some photos or diagrams. Okay, what key feature has been used in this title? Dirty and dangerous, nasty jobs from the past. That's right, alliteration, good job. OK, so before we get started, we need to think about what we need to do in order to be successful in this lesson. So when we are approached with a um, SAT style paper, what processes do we go through when we are reading in order for us to make accurate answers? OK, so the first thing we do is we read text carefully. What is it that Miss Thomason and I ask you to do in order to make it easier to refer back to the text? Well done, we do some text marking or highlighting. This makes it easier to locate bits of information in the text. Okay, so we start by reading and highlighting the text. Then what do we do? Fantastic, we read the question carefully. And just like text marking the text, we also do that with the question. We highlight the key words. And highlighting the key words in the question, it helps us to understand what the question is asking us. Okay, so understand the question is asking us. Okay. We also look at something that's not in the question but it's near the question and it helps us to see how much effort we need to put into that question. Okay so look at how many marks the question is for. Okay, so if we're really, really struggling with a question and it's only worth one mark, we're going to skip it and we can come back if we have time. Okay, so then what do we do? So we've read and highlighted the text and found key areas and keywords. We have highlighted the keywords in the question. We've understood what the question is asking us for. and We know how much effort we've got to put into it. Now we have to find the answer. So we're going to use skimming and scanning skills to find key words. Then as always, we are going to read, oh, read above and below that keyword to find the answer and construct our answer appropriately. This means that if it says write one word, I will write one word. If it says write a phrase, I will write a few words. If it is a three mark answer, I'm going to be using point evidence, point evidence, or point evidence explain. Okay, point evidence explain, and then maybe an additional point if you're not sure if your answer is accurate enough. Okay, so that's our success criteria. Make sure you come back to that and refer to that if you need to when you are doing your activity. So let's get going. 
dirty and dangerous. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Okay, dirty and dangerous, nasty jobs from the past. Throughout history, people have had to do all sorts of dangerous, disgusting jobs to earn money, enough money to survive. Okay, so that's interesting. Da oh, dangerous and disgusting jobs to earn enough money to survive. So the reason they do the dangerous and disgusting jobs is because they don't have enough money to survive elsewise. Okay. Luckily, many of these jobs no longer exist and children go to school instead. Read about these awful occupations and be thankful that you don't do any of them for a living. So we're going to look first at a gong scourer. These days, flushing toilets are taken for granted. However, until Victorian times, there was no adequate drainage system in most British cities. Most of what we now flush down the toilet was instead collected in vast holes dug into the ground called cesspits. The unenviable job of a gong scourer was to empty these foul smelling pits. Okay, so I'm going to choose to write the phrase what it is. So this part of the text is telling me what a gong scourer is. The name gong scourer first arose during the Tudor period when an informal name for a toilet was a gong. A gong scourer also went by the other titles such as a gong farmer or a night soil man. Okay, so that bit, what's that paragraph all about? The name, well done. So that's all about the name. So I'm just gonna write that as a one word summary of that paragraph. Let's continue. Due to the very nature of their job, gong scourers were only permitted to work after nightfall when there were fewer people on the streets to be offended by their sight and smell. They would shovel the waste out of the cesspits, transfer it into barrels and then transport it by horse and cart to rural areas. They could then sell the waste to farmers to use as much sought after fertilizer on their fields. Okay, so this is um, what the job includes. Okay, so it's describing what the job is, what they actually have to do. Okay, so you could say what they have to do. So you can see that I've not highlighted words within the paragraphs as much today. And that's because I have just summarized each paragraph. I'm gonna sneeze, do apologize. I might sneeze in a minute. Okay, so moving on to the next page, you can see here that we are moving on to a different job. This job is the leech collector. Okay, so they're going to be collecting leeches. A leech is a variety of worm with a mouth at one end, which, is which it uses to suck blood out of other creatures. Leeches were commonly used in medicine for many centuries and were all the rage in the 1800s. Okay, so again, we've got what a leech is. Okay, so we've got that, but I'm also going to put with my um, pen, a red pen, I can't get up to that pen. A cross because it's used for medical reasons. Okay, so that helps me remind myself that that's in there for medicine. During the time, it was fashionable for doctors to use leeches to extract bad blood from patients. Doctors of the period believed that bad blood was responsible for many illnesses and that applying leeches to the body could cure them. We now know this is not to be the case. Bad blood is not a cause of illness. So this is all about what they thought. Okay. Well done for keeping up year six. 
Okay, let's look at the next paragraph then. Leech collectors would wade tentatively into muddy marshes or stagnant bogs to collect leeches that they could then sell to doctors. Okay, so I am going to use highlighting here. So they wade tentatively. Okay, so that's like um, almost like nervously, like they're creeping in. They don't obviously want to um, have a leech latch onto them because then that would suck out the blood from them. And they're in muddy marshes and stagnant bogs. So they must have been really, really smelly. Stagnant is when something's been there for a very, very long time. Okay, so they make their money by selling them to the doctors. Okay, sell to doctors. Leech collectors would often use their own legs to attract the leeches. When the leeches had drunk their fill of blood, they would fall off and could be gathered. As a result of their unfortunate profession, many leech collectors suffered from blood loss or were badly affected by infected badly affected by infected wounds on their legs. Okay, so this is the effect, isn't it? Okay, so the effect or the cons of the job. So the cons or dangers. Okay, so that's what happens further down here. But again, like we had with this one, it's kind of following the same format. We've got what the job includes. Okay, so that's here. What the job includes. Super. And the last paragraph for this page. As the 1800s drew to a close, so many leeches had been collected that their numbers were dwindling across Europe. Okay, so like they were becoming extinct, um, not quite, but almost. Doctors stopped using leeches to treat their patients and leech collecting began to die out as an occupation. What a relief. Okay, so this bit here is a good example of authorial voice. Okay, so the author of this text is saying, what a relief, it's a good job they've stopped collecting. Okay. And the last one, Chimney Sweeps Apprentice. Now you will remember some of this from our work on the Victorian. So let's see how much you can remember as we go through. A Chimney Sweeps Apprentice. During the 1700s and 1800s, orphans or children from very poor families were commonly sent to work with chimney sweeps. Children were used to clean chimneys because unlike adults, they could easily negotiate the narrow chimneys. Okay, they could easily negotiate the narrow chimney. So that's why we can't do it as adults because we're not small enough or nimble enough or agile enough to get up there. The work was not easy. It was punishing and treacherous. Again, we've got some very powerful vocabulary here, haven't we? Clambering up the inside of the chimney would lead to cuts and grazes on the child's hands, knees and elbows. In an attempt to toughen up the children's skin, the master chimney sweep would rub these wounds with salty water while standing by a fire, an agonisingly painful process. While their apprentices were working, some masters would even light fires in the, in the hearth below to encourage them to pick up the pace. These children also ran the risk of getting stuck up the chimney. If this happened, they had to be pulled out with a rope. However, if there was a fall of soot, they could suffocate. So again, we have got the dangers, haven't we? Sadly, working with chimney sweeps often led children to an early death. Years of contact with soot could cause cancer and inhaling soot gave many of them breathing problems. In 1840, a law was passed banning anyone under the age of 16 from being a chimney sweeps apprentice. However, this largely went ignored and it wasn't until 1875 that a law re requiring police to enforce the previous ban finally abolished this cruel practice. From this point on, chimney sweeps were obliged to use flexible brushes instead. OK, 
Okay, so this is moving forward and change in law. Okay, so well done. We've read the text. We have text marked in the form of summarising each paragraph to help us find out or make it easier for us to locate information when we go back. So we are now going to move on to the next part. So we're going to look at the questions. So we need to read the question carefully and highlight the keywords. So I'm just going to do the first one with you. And then you are going to head on over to Teams to answer the rest of the question. OK, so it says these days flushing toilets are taken for granted. What does the phrase taken for granted mean in the sentence above? Now, I'm going to go back to the text and see that it was here. It's the first opening sentence. These days, flushing toilets are taken for granted. So I'm going to read around the question, okay? However, until Victorian times, there was no adequate drainage system in most British cities. So this bit is going to help me, okay? So adequate drainage system, okay? So the fact that we take them for granted means that we think there is an adequate drainage system. Okay, so what does the phrase taken for granted mean in this sentence? So it means that people do not realize how easy it is now and that people previously had to empty sewage themselves or with a job. Okay, so we always go back. And Naughty Miss Gundry, I did not follow my success criteria. What did I forget to do? That's right, I didn't highlight the key words. Okay, so I'm going to highlight that part there. So what is telling us what we are doing? The phrase taken for granted mean. Okay, so I'm looking for the meaning of taken for granted. Okay, so you can head on over to Teams now and finish this. If you are not yet working on Teams, then I'm going to ask you to look at the questions on the following pages and the answers will be at the end and you can send them in. Okay, so that's your first two questions. And the next one. Just a few more. Okay, so we have a free mark question here. So think about your point evidence explain and point evidence, point evidence. Last few questions. Again, a three mark question here. And the next page is your answers. So make sure you've paused and answered all of the questions. And now you can go through the answers. Well done, year six. Great job today and I'll see you here again tomorrow. Bye bye.